So thanks for joining us today. Um, we're really grateful to be able to bring such an awesome group of people together again to have this conversation. Um, I'm really excited to, for them really, to share some of their thoughts and experiences with you. So I just wanted to start with an introduction to myself really before I pass this, um, this over to our, um, to our partners today. So I'm Siobhan, um, I'm the president of the Advertising Production Club of New York. We're an organization that seeks to support students who are looking to enter the world of media and advertising production as well as the professionals who are already in the industry. We do this by providing education, strong community and fundraising for our scholarship fund, um, as well as our internship program. Um, our organization has always been very heavily involved in offline events, but like everybody over the last few months, we've moved to a much more online model for providing the valuable content and the conversations that we believe our community wants to be having. Um, as well as these webinars that hopefully some of you have joined some of our previous, um, we have been having um, monthly virtual meetups, which are a really great way to stay connected um, and meet new people in the community, um, whether that be students, young professionals, um, or some of the incredible individuals who've been a part of the production industry and contributing um, for many, many years. So please keep an eye out for those events um, and please don't come and join us very soon. So today is the first of our partnership webinars. I'm really excited to start this series. So I hope to be able to share um, much more of the community with you. So um, today we are, uh, I'm mainly passing the mic to Deborah Korn, who from, from um, Project Peacock, who is going to lead the conversation with her wonderful panelists today that she will introduce you to in a minute. Really, thank you so much, Deborah, for, for joining us today. So excited to have you. Super excited that you're the first person, uh, yeah. the first partnership that's coming on. I like um, being first. You know, I know having spent some time with all four of you before this, that you guys have got so much great content to share today. You know, I'm really excited for you to get going. So um, I will let you take it from there. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Siobhan. I mean, truly, truly an honor. I have been on the board of the APC for quite some time now, uh, certainly uh, supported every way I possibly can. I launched my Project Peacock Print Fair with you guys in uh, 2019. We had an amazing event. Just so happy that uh, you are, you know, extending this to an online platform so that we can actually reach more people and get more support. And everybody really should support this organization. Um, they, they don't just talk about it. They actually do things and they help the students get jobs and careers. And um, they're, they're just a great bunch of people. Uh, so thank you so much. And we will get started. So my name is Deborah Korn, and I am the Intergalactic Ambassador to the Printiverse at a, my company is called PrintMediaCenter.com. And Print Media Center provides print inspiration and resources to print and marketing professionals. And I always like to say with a little fun mixed in. Print inspiration I define as the process of being mentally stimulated to do something creative with print. And that is our goal today, but not just in creativity, but to really focus on this unique moment in time for direct mail. And I'm looking directly in the camera when I say this, because it is unique in the sense that looking at the mail has become an activity that people look forward to every day. Uh, this is the opportunity to get information to people where they really appreciate it. Um, and it could be as targeted as you want. It could be as general as you want. It can be as technologically advanced as the tools that Erica and the, quite frankly, United States Post Office bring to the table here. But the most important thing is that this is the thing to be talking to your clients about if you are a, a work in the agencies, if you work in the brands, this is something you should be looking at as uh, the, the sure, almost the surefire way of uh, making sure somebody sees your information. And of course, uh, for it to now be trackable, you'll be able, you can provide results. And the United States Post Office um, has really stepped up with a myriad of programs that really help us all do our work better. If there are any printers on this call as well, um, obviously you can benefit from all of this. So today on the 
panel from the United States Post Office. We have Michelle Ellerby, and um, everyone's going to give you a little bio of who they are, but I just wanted to uh, everyone to understand why we brought these people together. So we have the United States Post Office. The programs generate from them, and there are rules, uh, rules around them, and uh, Michelle will uh, provide some information that will help everybody start on their journey. We have Jamie McLennan, also hashtag Jamie the printer. He's representing the print service provider in our direct mail presentation today. He's going to let everybody know what you need to know so that you have enough time to get your mail to the printer printed and then to the post office. And finally, I have plus technology because the post office does have some technology, but if you want to go to the brand level of technology, Erica Switzer has the tools and the goods to help you honestly uh, do everything from matching people back to their social media, to uh, providing metrics like you have never seen before that prove that mail is a viable communication channel, especially right now. Uh, without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Michelle. Thank you so much, everybody. Really appreciate you spending this time with us. Thank you, Deborah. I couldn't ask for a better introduction regarding the mail than what you just lined up. Um, my name is Michelle Ellerby. I'm a business alliance manager. I've been with this organization for over 30 years, and I've spent over 22 of those years supporting the professional mailing and shipping industry. So I'm excited to talk to you about an overview of some of our promotions and a few of the other products. Throughout the calendar year, the Postal Service has created um, a very a selection of promotions. The objective there is to entice mailers to take advantage of discounts. And in order to get those discounts, there are minor things that you have to do or types of mailings that you have to create. But the objective here is to give the mailers, the printers, the opportunity to grow their, their marketing in the mail and take advantage of um, different discounts available. If you aren't able to take advantage of some of these right now, these types of promotions have been in place for several years and we are hoping that these will continue into the next year. So look at the promotions here. There have been very few changes and we're gonna look at some of them more deeply, but these are something that have been going on consecutively. So it is our expectation that the PRC will approve them and we'll be able to see more of these promotions moving into 2021. Today we're going to focus on three of the promotions out there that are evolving around technology. The Postal Service has really embraced the fact that the marketing community today wants to integrate technology with mail. Mail is a strong communication vehicle, but let's face it, the world has expanded in how we market to people and the adoption rate has to be that we all work together collectively to communicate and continue to communicate. One of the things that you said uh, that you see a lot of times when we're talking about marketing is the fact that the consumer is overrun with so many marketing messages a day. I've seen statistics that say anything from 2,500 to somewhere to close to 3,000. But right now there's something unique going on and that is fewer and fewer people are going out into the world, which means there are less of those specific marketing messages hitting them. So the ones that they are exposed to are more impactful. And going back to what Deborah said earlier, going to the mailbox, reading your mail has become an activity. So the opportunity to take advantage of this during this time is really unique. The final thing we're gonna talk about is every door direct mail, more commonly referred to as EDDM, which is an exciting, great way to get introduced into direct mail because it's low tech and easy to start. So we're gonna move forward into emerging technology. Okay, emerging technology and advanced technology is the uh, promotion that is currently going on. So that's where we're going to start. Um, the registration period is still going on but unfortunately this particular program is going to be ending at the end of the summer, August 31st. You still have an opportunity to take advantage of this um, um, promotion and the registration period is here. If you're anticipating doing this promotion or any of them, I encourage you to just register for all the promotions now. And that way you've got it in place that you are prepared to take advantage of any of the promotions throughout the calendar year. 
Okay. When we talk about emerging technology, what we're talking about are seven technologies, several of which have been in place for quite some time. Many people are familiar with near field technology, but it's an automatic launch in your cell phone when it comes close to the mail pieces themselves. Um, digital to direct, video and print. Video and print is one of my favorites because it's so much fun, but it's a little expensive. But who's, uh, you know, the, the retention rate on those types of mail pieces are phenomenal. The integration and the digital assistant is a newer adaption on technology. And what that really focuses on is things like um, Alexa and Google that you can actually talk to your house and ask it to launch to the website in conjunction to the mail piece itself. We're gonna talk a little bit here about some of the tips for taking advantage of this. And there's really my favorite and, and the most important is plan. Planning is important. If you're not gonna do it this year, plan for some of this technology next year. It's, it's valuable. Um, your mail service provider, which Jamie is going to talk to uh, talk to you about, they're going to be able to walk you through many of these different steps. And at the end of this presentation, I will share with you some resources so that you're able to explore what needs to be done in greater detail. But it's it's a relatively simple process. Plan in advance. Um, most of the approvals come to you within 48 hours. However, you don't want to wear it down to the very last minute. So allow a few extra days. If you anticipate it's going to be a 48 hour um, uh, approval process, allow that extra time so that you're not stressing and everything moves smoothly. The next promotion that we focus on is mobile shopping. Personally, my favorite, I love to shop. And if you're going to incentivize me to do it, I'm down. One of the exciting things about this particular promotion for the advertising community is if you look at the dates that this promotion runs through, this promotion and this discount is available all the way through holiday mailing. So when you and everyone else are competing for that ever important consumer dollar, here's a phenomenal way to communicate with them, incentivize them to shop, the mobile shopping promotion, you're getting a discount on your postage to entice them, and it, it takes them straight to your shopping website. Awesome. A discount all the way through the holidays with the mail. What more could you ask for? So I, I'm always excited about this one because um, girl loves to shop, and if you're going to send me a discount, awesome. Okay, so the requirements on this are relatively simple in that there has to be a component on that mail piece that takes you to the, the shopping experience. Most common are the QR codes. Most people are familiar with that, but there's a whole host of new technologies available. They're listed here. And again, this is something that um, will be further discussed in Erica and Jamie's um, presentation as far as those types of vendor partners able to help support you in creating the technology to launch the, the mail pieces properly. So these are uh, simple requirements, relatively speaking, but it makes for a great mailing experience and a great marketing experience. Finally is informed delivery. Informed delivery is one of the most popular things going on right now. Informed delivery is a communication between your phone and your mail. And it is, um, there's some stats that I'll be showing that will make this very exciting. Now, the fact that it's actually being discount is really exciting that you're doing it in the mail because there's really no extreme, there's no cost or charge for the information that comes back to you from the consumer. So it's actually taking advantage of, you know, essentially free technology from our end as you get a discount for the mail itself that creates that promotion. I see who signed up for informed delivery. I'm going to show you that information in a minute, and it's very really exciting. But informed delivery, if you look at the slide here, shows you that you're looking at that M omni-channel experience, the experience of looking at the mail piece as it's being um, checked on your phone. Every single day, anyone who has signed up for informed delivery actually gets a, an, an email from the post office and tells you what you can anticipate that day in the mail. Exciting. If you're a, Erica, next page, I get excited, I'm talking. As you're going through your phone, previewing your mail, what happens is you're able to launch directly to the website 
of those vendor partners that are mailing to you that day. So this is a great opportunity to keep that omni-channel or consistent communication. A lot of people hear the term omni-channel, but don't necessarily understand that what you're saying is the same message in all marketing platforms. And so here's the communication between the cell phone, the post office, and your website. So here was the information that you were asking. Who has signed up for informed delivery? Currently, there are 26.5 million um, consumers, households, signed up for um, informed delivery. And if you look at the, the information at the top of the corner, that statistic was pulled by me May 29th. There has actually been additional people. So I believe, Erica, in your presentation, you pulled that information a couple days ago, and you'll see the lift of participants in just that short two-week period. This has been an amazing return on investment because time and time again, those major marketers that have utilized it continue to use it, reuse it, learn from it, and go back again and again. So the informed delivery program, if you haven't already signed up for it, is the easiest thing. It's on USPS.com. Every marketer should be looking at it because not only is it a preview to your mailbox, but it gives you insight to who is using it already. So if you're not signed up for informed delivery, you're missing some opportunity for checking your mail, easy peasy, but also looking at what the competition is doing to utilize this product. And it will inspire you to move forward with it. One of the most fun yeah. statistics that we use in the post office is that the inception rate and sign up rate for informed delivery in our first three years when we introduced this program was a faster um, sign up rate than the first three years of Facebook. So that gives you an idea of how many people have adapted, not only in the marketing environment, but our consumers, because people are looking for things in the mailbox, and here's an opportunity to do it from work, from home, at the mall. Okay, here are a list, and this information will be given to you. I'm gonna send all this to Deborah so that if you want to go back, these are the individual websites that are available for questions and also to get the information and get your approvals. Um, these are here for you. Additionally, there is a tremendous uh, resource that the Postal Service has created. It's called Postal Pro. Postal Pro will walk you through just about everything you wanna know about the mail. It's not limited to these promotions. If you are looking to grow your business using the mail. The information that you're potentially looking for is in this website, the resources, our guidebooks, um, anything that's coming forward. Even if you are already in the mail, and let's just say that there is something going on weather related, you're able to look at Postal Pro and it will tell you about impacted areas. So this is the single greatest resource that I can give to you when in regards to um, how to interact with the post office and get information. The second greatest resources is your mail service provider. And it might be in reverse order, you never know, because I know that every single mail service provider and printer out there utilizes this resource um, abundantly. Okay, so finally we're gonna just go over EDDM, or Every Door Direct. Every Door Direct mail was created a few years ago and it was created as an introductory vehicle for small businesses to get in, introduced to utilizing the mail. But the adoption rate for this program and so many even larger, bigger businesses have gotten to enjoy it, that it just continues to grow and expand. It's called a low tech mail program. And the reason is you don't need a fancy website or a, a mailing list. You do need the website, but you don't need a mailing list. You simply have to identify a geography that's important to you. If you're trying to do something that's relevant to a small business, typically the market you're trying to reach is within your, your geography. If you're a bigger box store and you've expanded, you've opened something new, again, you're really generally talking to a, a concise geography. So the Postal Service, our partners have created, thank you, um, technology that makes it simple for you because it's essentially just click and pick who you want to communicate with and they support you in the mailing. Here's an example of how you simply have to look at where is your business, expand out the map to identify 
what radius is important to you? What does your business typically pull in to communicate? Are you a small restaurant and you usually have a five mile radius? Are you a veterinarian or something that's smaller? Or are you a bigger store that expands out? This type of a program gives you an opportunity. And again, it's, it's easy to use. The secondary thing is that you don't have to do it all at once. You can pick one portion of the uh, geography, move into the next, and kind of, if you would look at this circle as a pie, and take advantage of these marketing targets as you're able to take in the business. Because one thing, especially with smaller businesses, you wanna keep in mind how much, how many consumers can you service? So, you, you know, you wanna gauge what works best for you. All right, so if you're interested in exploring the Every Door Direct program, there is an abundance of information that you can just click through, play with the maps even at usps.com. Just hit the business tab and you'll see all of the different um, informational programs associated with the Every Door Direct program. Okay, so again, I just wanna reemphasize that you know the Postal Service wants to work with you. We want your business and we wanna make it as easy as possible. So here are some of the resources that are available to you. First of all, again, Postal Pro. Postal Pro is everything from generalized information to extremely detailed information designed to support the mailing community. Um, registrations, if you're going to move forward with the promotions, you do have to register them at the gateway. Um, a lot of times, if you're working with a, a printer or a mail service provider, they will take care of that component for you. But if you're a smaller mailing mailer and want to do it independently, then you'll need to utilize this resource. Then again, there's the help desk. We want to talk to you. So if you need help navigating this, then there's the phone number below. And um, again, you can always visit usps.com because most of the websites are here are linked off of our main website and we're here to support you. We want you to grow your business and interact with us in the mail. And I thank you so much for your time. First question is, um, is there a specific reason why uh, the promotions are uh, not running at all, all times, especially now through the end of the year, someone's asking? Um, well, yes and no. Um, I, what I do know I can answer and then other, you know, some things were created at levels higher than myself. The one thing is that if you look at several of the promotions, there's a strong similarity in what the program offers. So you don't want them to consistently overlap. And the other thing is that we want to, the promotions are designed to get people excited about the mail but we want you to continue mailing. So we can't keep it on sale forever. So the reality is we want you to you know, take advantage of this when it's important to you, but at the same time, you know, we do want the postage to continue. So, you know, they, there is a rationale behind it. Um, also in, if you look at the more specifics of some of these, um, there's different classes of mail, some that we didn't necessarily right. talk about and that you just aren't able to do that throughout the yeah. year. I mean, it makes sense. Every day can't be Taco Tuesday. There's only one Taco Tuesday. Um, the question is, um, do you sell the opt-in data for informed delivery to third parties? No. Is it easy as easy to opt out as it is to opt in? Opt-in with to regards to- delivery, informed delivery. You can opt out. At, I mean, if, if, as far as a consumer, yes, you can easily opt out if you don't. If you decide this is not your. And then the last question before we turn it over to Jamie is, can a campaign, I guess, a multiple, you know, mailing campaign, qualify for multiple discounts? No. Each mailing. Okay. So can you explain that, please? I think that's important. Okay. Ask me the question again because you can only have, looking at your mailing you're only going to be able to take advantage of one of the promotions. So you have to determine, uh, and again, you work that through with your, your mail service provider, and that's where they give you a lot of the guidance. Which promotion are you targeting to take advantage of? And that's the singular promotion that you're gonna get for that mailing. However, as a marketer, 
you can do multiple programs throughout the year, which is why I said register for all of them. So you can do throughout the year multiple campaigns taking advantage of different promotions, but you can only apply one promotion. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for, for that information and for everything you just shared. And um, now we're going to move to Jamie McLennan. Uh, he is a print service provider who has been uh, doing an, uh, doing direct mail and helping his clients with direct mail for um, years and years and years, so much that he has a hashtag, Jamie the Printer. Jamie is going to pretty much uh, explain now what a printer needs from you and what you, how you can best work with the printer to make sure that you uh, you can qualify and you can take advantage of these uh, promotions. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks, Deborah. Thanks, Siobhan. Uh, yes, as Deborah said, I am Jamie the printer. I was deemed that by Deborah many years ago, and I am running with it. I love it. So uh, DMR Graphics, powered by Allegra Princeton. Uh, I personally have been in the printing industry for over 35 years, running presses, helping do the mail, moving into sales and into the office. And DMR and Allegra Graphics have also been in business for over 30 years uh, doing just that. You're right, so what is it, what should you look for in a print or mail service provider? Um, we're not all one size fits all. Some of, uh, some of the mail out there, need, you need a small printer. Some of the mail that you do out there, you're gonna need a large printer that's gonna handle you know, millions of pieces of mail. What, what we look for is that we offer a mixed bag. We can do pretty much any type of mail that you can look for. We do digital mailing for short runs and variable data needs, and we do offset for our large print runs up to 100,000 pieces or more. Um, and what is good about that is we have a lot of customers that like to print an offset mailer, and then we'll do some variable on a small portion of that. Say we're doing like 30,000 pieces of mail, they'll take 10% of that, do the variable, do 3,000 pieces to a select target, and trying to follow and see what's the best response they get from that. You know, are they getting better response from their large mailing, or are they getting a little bit more detailed, uh, fine-tuned personal mail? Are they getting better response for that? So we like to kind of highlight that and show customers that you can do a little bit of both with your mailing and track and see which is the best response for that. So we can, we can help you with that. Um, look, when you're looking for a mail print provider, make sure they have up-to-date software. Uh, we run all this, the latest software. It ties into the USPS so we can, we can check for all the pre-sort uh, discounts. We will check for all the, uh, the mailing promotions and we, we, follow that, we follow that calendar all year long. Uh, and one of the things that we're especially happy with is that we are a, a Mail Anywhere approved uh, mail house. So you can take your indicia and we can mail from our post office from anybody's indicia or we can use our indicia and mail anywhere in the United States at any, and drop at any post office. So it helps things, speeds things along. Uh, it's very helpful with uh, nonprofit companies and agencies that uh, we can use their indicia and drop it at our local post office and we don't have to truck it to another post office in another state. Um, some of the other things to look at, if, you, if your agency or business does a lot of uh, match mailings, um, do you have uh, cameras in sort uh, with your inserter? Uh, one of our inserters, we can do a jumbo size mail up to nine by 12s. We can camera match up to five pieces of your mail going into your envelope. That way there's perfect uh, matching every time. It gets inserted into your envelope, seals the envelope at the end, inkjets your address name on it that matches all the pieces inside because it's been barcoded and knows 100% accuracy. Uh, we do a lot of financial work and work for some of the uh, social security companies. And as Deborah knows, financial uh, mail is dead important. Now you don't want to get uh, Erica's mail and Deborah's piece and De Deborah's envelope. That's a no-no. And uh, our customer comes in monthly and does spot checks and we have always passed the grade. So that's something to always look at. You're looking for larger mails like that, mailings like that. Uh, and another thing is look for somebody that can help integrate your marketing solutions. You can offer your mail tracking, can offer other services other than just putting the pieces in the mail. You can, uh, as uh, Erica will go in later, there's a lot more to the mail than uh, what meets the eye. And as we see here, uh, we specialize with postcards. Everybody knows what a postcard is. Small little postcards to large ones, letters, match mailings in every door direct mail, which Michelle has uh, briefed us on, which I'll go on further in a slide a uh, couple down the line. All right. How do you receive those posted promotions? Um, as Michelle showed us, there's a number of them going on right now. But the biggest thing that we can do is plan 
plan, plan, follow the calendar, look at it earlier in the year, see what your marketing uh, plan looks like for the year and then plan on, you know, we're going to do this mailing at this certain time of the year. We're gonna, we might wait for the informed uh, mailing um, program a little bit later in the year. Make sure that's planned. Talk to your printer, bring them in early. They uh, don't, nothing worse than getting a piece of uh, artwork dropped on your door Wednesday morning and they say they like to mail it on Friday. And by the way, we want to look for these discounts. And uh, you know, that's just 20, 48 hours is just not going to help. Uh, as, it, as we've learned, it could take up to four days for the mail to USPS to inspect your piece, make sure it goes through all the approval processes. Um, but we, we can help you with that. Uh, as a you know, print mail service provider, we know that what your mail looks like, if that's going to pass the grade, if everything's in the proper places. Uh, we work with the post office every day so we can help streamline these processes and get your uh, piece proved rather quickly. Um, agencies, designers, and the brands, they're not looking to go through all the fine uh, data going through the mail uh, websites, even though they're very helpful. They just want to come to somebody and say, hey, is this going to work or is it not going to work? That's why I say bring us in early. We can help straight your steer you in the right way. And can we also make suggestions? You know, you know, this is how do you, you know, you have a budget. This may be way under your budget or way over your budget. That's, we can, you know, we've seen these things. We can help you early on. That way your customer is happy with the end product and we help you meet your deadlines, which is the most important thing. This has to mail August 1st. Let's get it in the mail August 1st and not wait till the 5th. Biggest thing, plan. You can only say it one time, but I'll say it a hundred times. Get us involved early and plan as much as possible. Uh, every door direct mail, which is one of my favorite things, which I've done for many years since it's come out a few years ago. Uh, what I like to call it and what uh, DMR Allegra likes to call it is near me mail. You're mailing to all the customers near you. And it's, it's easy to use. It's low tech, as Michelle has said. Uh, it's a flat rate postcard. And what does that mean? It's anything, not a small postcard, not a letter size rate. So it could be four inches, but it needs to be 11 inches. It could be 12 by 15 inches, which is the max size. Most commonly are basically uh, nine by six and a quarter by nine is the most common every door direct mail size. But I always try and put my customers in, let's not be the common size. Let's do something like six by 11 or even six by 12, and just even that one inch difference, we still print it on the same size press. You can get an extra inch, it's still the same price. It still fits on the same press sheet. You can maximize your area in the post office, in the post uh, mailbox when it shows up. Best thing to do is when something shows up, it stands out. Um, and that's what a lot of our customers say when they use the every door direct mail piece. Uh, it stands out. Smaller companies and uh, stores, they can saturate their area blocks around their, their business. I've had customers use it for 500 pieces, one or two carrier routes. We've had customers use it for 5,000 pieces up to 100,000 pieces. And there's different structure on how we mail that. You're allowed 5,000 pieces per day through the front door, but through the business mail, the DMEU, you can send, you can uh, drop more than 5,000 pieces a day and hit many different areas at one time. Key to that is it's a flat size mailer. More than, more than a number of times I've had uh, customers ask me if we can mail a four by six postcard every door direct mail. And I said, no, you get much bigger real estate. We're looking at six by 11 or nine by 12. And one of the great things, it's 19 cents per postage. And uh, people don't understand that postcard mailing is uh, 34 cents now or something like that, 35 cents for a postcard. So it's a big savings with a lot more real estate, more bang for your buck. And one of the other things that it's a little on the quiet side, but we can do a little bit of nonprofit mailing with those every door direct mails. It's uh, those customers tend to really enjoy it. And uh, it's, uh, if it's something you want to learn more about, you can always reach out to me. It's something that's rather fun to do. And uh, we have much success with it. Um, a lot of big questions with every door direct mail. People want to know how long does it take to arrive? Uh, since the, the printer and our, as, as we are print mail providers, we process all the mail. It's bundled. It's ready to go. So we take that part away from the USPS. They don't have to bundle it, sort it. It's already done by us. Once it gets there, it goes right to the mail carrier. So we've had mail drop and on a Wednesday, and I've had customers actually get the piece in the mail Thursday. So it's not always, but you know, it could take two to five days, but it is almost first class speed for that, for that postal rate, just because all the work is done up front. So that's a big help. Customers seem to really enjoy that. They are knowing that their pieces are getting there uh, very quickly. Uh, once again, recently with a, uh, 
not a lot of people going out and visiting places. The uh, a lot of more small businesses are trying to get their names out there to who to their local customers. This is one of the great ways for them to do it. Not spend a lot of money. I mean, I had customers budget. I want to mail five or ten thousand pieces all at one time, and I try and get them to say maybe we do two thousand pieces three times or three thousand pieces three times. It's if you're a small business, not everybody knows your name. It's better to hit them multiple times. They get to see you a little better. You get to test it. Maybe do a different coupon uh, for each mailing. See which one works the better. And then later on, we can do it again and narrow in on which coupon works the best. And uh, we find that helps uh, works very well. So that's pretty much about it, about every door direct mail. And I think uh, um, it's excellent. very short and sweet for printers. We, yeah. you know, we love what we do and it's putting ink on paper and getting it out in the mail as quickly as possible. So. Thanks so much. Uh, we actually have a couple questions. Um, first of all, Jamie, I'll ask you this specifically. Um, can you just clarify um, that the max length of a postcard is, you said 12 inches for the every door direct mail, is that correct? They have the max size for a postcard and Michelle can correct me if I'm wrong, is 12 by 15. That's the max postcard size for a flat. So okay. that's what they have been. We do a lot of flat rates that size. Um, you know, we, our common one is usually a six by 11 or six by 12, nine and a half, 12 and a half, you know, as long as it's not number 10 letter size or postcard size, as long as it's a flat mailer. Okay. Uh, another question, which is going to make the United States post office very happy. Is it possible to send every door direct mail to everybody in the United States? Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Why not? All at once, multiple <laughs> times. To, just to kind of clarify, is that we do have mailers that take advantage of every door direct um, in the million piece range and beyond. So, is it something that can be utilized for those huge mailings? Absolutely. Um, the only thing that really doesn't typically get um, the every door direct are businesses. Although if a, a individual business is there, they will. But it's really a consumer targeted product. Great point, okay. Michelle. I was going to bring that up. Yes, businesses can be mixed in with, with consumers, but you can you can mail to just consumers or mix both. You can't do businesses alone. Okay, uh, there's one last question. I'm not sure if Erica is going to cover it. So if you are Erica, just say you're going to cover it and then we'll move on. But the, you know, the obvious question about a B2B mail and the fact that, you know, people are working from home. So how are people finding success now with those kind of mailings if people aren't necessarily in the office? I don't specifically address it in my presentation, but I can address uh, the question. A couple of different ways. Number one is that you can pull mailing lists of business owners and C-level executives at their home address. Um, it's not 100% available, but it, I believe it's around 70, 80% availability, especially as you get into the higher level um, executives and the business owners where you can target them at their home. Um, also, and we talked about this a little bit on one of the other webinars that I was on in Michelle correct me if I'm wrong, but businesses and people who work at their business address can get their business mail forwarded to their home. And I think a lot of people are doing that now. Um, it, I was speaking to another business alliance manager about this, and you can actually request for your business mail to be temporarily forwarded to your home until you're back to the office. So I do know of, you know, a lot of businesses that are doing that, people who work in businesses. Um, but honestly, you can pull those lists and you can reach those people at their home and you should be taking advantage of that. Because of COVID-19 and the uniqueness, there are some things the Postal Service has been doing that was is, is temporary for this environment with regards to business mail. So, you know, there are efforts being made to make sure that that's taken care of. But right now, I would like to introduce everybody to the future of direct mail. And I mean this, pay attention to this presentation because when your clients, the brands or your clients, whoever they might be, want to know what they're getting for their money, who's looking at it, how you can engage with them afterwards, how you can plan future campaigns based on data that you can get from your mailings, this is 
one of the technologies that uh, is out there that can help you. It happens to be the one I like the best, which is why um, Erica is here. So thank you so much uh, for sharing uh, your information and I'll pass it over to you. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction, Deborah. I appreciate it. And thank you to the other panelists. This has been extremely informative and I hope that everybody is getting as much information out of it as I am. Um, as Deborah introduced me, I'm Erica Switzer. I'm the Vice President of Direct Mail 2.0. Um, and I do this a lot. I, I speak in person a lot, um, but I'm getting used to speaking in webinars and on panels and I really enjoy it. I've been in direct marketing for over 16 years. I sold direct mail. Uh, for over 13 years, and now I've moved into the technology realm that is male-centric. So I'm here today to teach you about stopping the battle between should I do digital or should I do direct mail and talk to you about the importance of integrating your marketing and creating an omni-channel experience and ensuring that direct mail is a part of your marketing strategy, especially during this time. So that will take me into my first point, which is direct marketing is more important now than ever before. Uh, one of the beautiful things about direct mail is the fact that you can pinpoint target your audience. You can get into the hands of a specific person with a specific message that is personalized to that individual. If you wanted to pull a mailing list of people who purchased Crest White Strips last week, you can and you can send them a mail piece. There is no other marketing channel that you can do that with. And with all of the advanced technologies in the print industry um, with variable data, and you can really micro-target your marketing, but still get out massive amounts of pieces at a fraction of the cost, okay? So when we're in COVID-19 right now and, and this landscape, we have to think about how are we gonna maximize our marketing dollars and how are we going to ensure that we're knocking off any waste in our marketing and we need to really hone in on who's going to purchase from us who's most likely to buy right now and how can we get our communication out to them just to give you some general statistics about direct mail versus digital when we look at them as standalone marketing channels direct mail outperforms digital by a long shot according to the dma response rate report it's seeing some of the highest response rates that it has ever seen. Now, when we talk about a prospect list, we're talking about a 5% response rate on average, and this is an aggregated data over 375 different industries. Average response rate of 5% is huge. Um, and that's a prospect list. Again, that's, those are people where you purchase a mailing list, they haven't done business with you before, and they haven't reached out to you before. A house list is seeing an average of 9% response rate. That's your internal list. That's your uh, customers, prospects that have reached into you and said, it's okay to communicate with me. And they're more receptive to your communication. Now, when we compare that to digital across the board, email, email response rates are going down. I don't know about you guys, but um, when the pandemic I started back in March, I started getting emails from AutoZone and like just every business that I had ever given my money to was telling me how they were handling the COVID-19 situation. I'm like, I don't care. Like I used you five years ago. So email inboxes are inundated and think about yourself. Sometimes you have to put yourself in the seat of your consumer or your, your perspective. Uh, prospective client. When you get up in the morning and you sit in front of your computer, what do you do when you open your email? Click, 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 delete, right? You prioritize. A lot of us do. Um, so email response rates are going down. It holds its place in the marketing strategy, but don't rely on it solely especially during this time because email inboxes are inundated. And of course, as we continue to look down all the digital paths, you can see most of the response rates are around 1% and then we get into display advertising, which is a fraction of a percent. So when you're looking at that beautiful invoice of digital marketing, I can get digital marketing for X number of dollars and it's really, really, really not expensive and it fits nicely within my budget. And direct mail is super expensive because postage is expensive and print is expensive. When you are weighing that out, you need to think about your return on investment. And your return on investment has to do with the opportunity or the response that you're going to get for your outflow communication. So this is something that you need to keep in mind. So 
back when we were all traveling and going to events, and even today, um, you hear a lot about needing to integrate your marketing. Well, what exactly does that mean? I, I've been hearing this for three to five years, but I don't really understand what it means that I need to integrate my marketing. I, the average business utilizes more than five different marketing channels to promote their organization, okay? But how are your different marketing channels speaking to one another? How are they working together to accomplish your overall goal, your overall revenue goal, client retention goals? How are they working for you and how are you maximizing that marketing dollar? That's what integration means. So I'm going to talk to you um, specifically about a product or a technology that will help you integrate and marry direct mail with digital to enhance your overall results on your direct mail marketing by 23 to 46%. If you can get a 23 to 46% lift in your overall results from your direct mail and receive a discount from the post office while doing it, wouldn't you? I know I would. So there are seven individual technologies that, that think very well with direct mail, and they work in an effort to do two things, to seamlessly track the effectiveness of your direct mail, which is extremely important these days because we're all about tracking, right? And a lot of marketing channels, especially digital marketing channels, are very easy to track because you have all of those analytics right at your fingertips. But direct mail is an offline marketing solution. So once your printer sends out your direct mail, you really don't have eyes on it. And what happens? Well, we, we really don't know. Yeah, we have QR codes, or maybe we have a landing page, or we have a coupon code on there. So we know when people buy from us. But is that your overall response? Is that your overall result? No, a lot of the times it's just the tip of the iceberg. So wouldn't you like to see where your direct mail is truly doing? And then wouldn't you like to re-engage those consumers that are interested based on your direct mail? Probably, right? And this qualifies for the emerging and advanced technologies discount that is going on right now. So again, you can add these tracking and integrated features into your direct mail and get a discount, which is huge. So I'm going to touch on a few things about the omni-channel marketing approach, and then I'm going to go into some current statistics, what's happening today in today's landscape, okay? The omni-channel marketing approach is very different than the multi-channel marketing approach, which most of you are probably either offering your clients or doing yourself. Um, you need to have the same message going to the same audience through multiple channels. That is omni-channel marketing. Multi-channel marketing is using several different marketing channels and changing your message with each one and slightly even changing your audience with each one. You can go after the dem same demographics, but you're not necessarily reaching the same people. We want you to send out a direct mail piece, then hit those same people on social media, those same people through informed delivery, those same people through the Google Display Network. If you're doing that, then you're standing out from those 2,900 marketing messages that people are seeing on a daily basis and you're making an impact and that's what we want more impressions because guys 80% of sales are made between the eighth and the 12th contact so you can take that single piece of mail and turn it into 8 to 12 impressions to bring somebody to their buying motivation and that is why this is so impactful so there's opportunity in the mailbox. As Deborah started off with this presentation, the moment is now, okay? You can get maximum impact in the mailbox right now. These are statistics that we pulled, uh, Direct Mail 2.0, from mail volume stats February 1st to May 31st. So this is looking at the, the COVID-19 pandemic time and mail market mail volume with integrated campaigns is down 18.37%. Now, at the National AIM meeting, which is Areas Inspiring Mail, the Postmaster General came out and said that mail volume is down 25% overall in this same timeline. Okay, so integrated campaigns that utilize mail is still down. But if we look, if we look over here at uh, the right hand side, you can see the average person receives 107 emails per day. I'd like to meet that person, by the way, because I receive over 800 per day. 
<laughs> display ads, they see an average person will see 63 display ads per day. The average person receives two pieces of mail per day. So think about that as far as the impact that your single piece of mail can have on an individual inside of a marketing strategy campaign in this day, today. Lots of opportunity. Now, another interesting thing is during the same time period, we took a look at the analytics of integrated campaign impressions. How many impressions are we getting to our niche market through direct mail and Google and social media, all working together and informed delivery, all working together? Impressions are up by 8.07%, despite the fact that mail volume is down. And this is all based on the exact same consumer niche market. If somebody receives your direct mail piece, goes to your website because they were interested, and then leaves your website and is retargeted with ads on social media and Google, they're engaged and they're more likely to go back to your website and convert. And these statistics show that that is still working when you begin your communication with that direct mail to generate the interest. So I'm just going to touch on a, a couple of the features that qualify for the emerging and advanced technologies and the specific um, part of emerging and advanced technologies called digital to direct. Okay, this pre qualifies you for that discount through the post office. This is called social match and this is where you take your mailing list and just based on first name, last name and physical address. You do not need emails. You do not need phones. You just need the mailing address. We can pre-match it to Instagram and Facebook accounts. And then what we do is we serve those people up ads as the mail is traveling through the post office before it reaches their mailbox. So what does this mean? This means that you bring your brand top of mind awareness. So by the time the mail reaches them, it looks familiar. They're more likely to engage with it and respond. And usage, just so you know, Hootsuite came out with this a little less than a month ago. Social media usage jumped from 70% per day to 87% per day. So 87% of people that have an active social media account are on their daily. Okay. And there are currently 2.5 billion active monthly users on Facebook. So don't poo poo Facebook and say, no, it's just for the older generation. People are flocking back to Facebook and Facebook and Instagram are still the juggernauts of social media. So this will get you that, that discount through the post office because you're starting with digital and then you're turning it into direct mail, same impressions to same people. Informed delivery. Um, so informed delivery, as Michelle went over, uh, is huge. And what an opportunity for you to get an additional impression with your mail and to stop the barrier of people going to your website, right? If they can just get to your website in a click of a button, they're more likely to do that than go up to their browser and type in a URL. And the beauty of it is you don't have to send them to your homepage. It, you can send them directly to the page that continues the communication of that mail piece. Again, they don't have to think. And if you don't have to make people think, then they're more likely to act and they're more likely to buy. Now, the interesting thing about informed delivery is that signups have actually gone up during COVID timeline. Signups pre-COVID were about 200,000 people a week. Now they're at 348,000 per week average. So this is gaining a lot of traction. And just a side note, Direct Mail 2.0 is the number one purveyor of informed delivery campaigns. We've run over 12% of all informed delivery campaigns that have gone out in the country. So we have a lot of statistics with informed delivery and we are advocates for it. It is the best thing since the self-adhesive stamp. Now, a lot of people will do what's called a replacement image with informed delivery, which means that they will actually replace their mail piece with a full color image and use that full color ride along image that's below it. What we have found through direct mail 2.0 and our own testing is that when you do that, click through rates actually go down. Because people, the consumer is used to logging into informed delivery and seeing their mail. They want to see their mail. This looks like an ad. It doesn't look like a mail piece. So when you keep the grayscale image of the mail piece and use the full color ride along ad, click through rates go up. And from what the USPS says is the click through range on average of all campaigns that have run, 
average click-through rates are 4 to 11%. If you know anything about email marketing, you know that that is astronomically high. What we see is when you just use the ride-along image with the grayscale mail piece, the average is 7 to 8% click-through rate. When you use the representative image with the ride-along, you're going to see an average of about 4% click-through rate. So those are from Direct Mail 2.0 statistics because we've segregated the two. So again, huge opportunity, huge click-through rate, even though not everybody's going to have informed delivery on your list, the people that do, you'll get a lot of traction from. And another thing to point out, during COVID, click-through rates have skyrocketed through informed delivery. So again, from February 1st to May 15th, we're seeing an overall average click-through rate of 10.59%, which is huge. People are checking their mail, people are acting on their mail. What an opportunity for you guys. And the informed delivery um, discount or postage promotion starts on September 1st. And that runs through November. So again, it, it does kind of overlap with mobile shopping. Um, but if you're not doing a QR code on your mail piece, but you want to take advantage of informed delivery, you're still going to get that 2% response or 2% discount. And integrated campaigns are working. So I want to show you an omni channel campaign uh, that did very, very well with a mail date of March 25th. So again, during this whole COVID-19 pandemic, you can see that from that single impression mail piece over time, the first six days, we were at 160 leads and we were at 11,751 ads displayed and 75 engagements. Engagements means somebody took an action, okay? They clicked, they called, they you know filled out their contact information, they took an action. By the end of four weeks, leads were at 1,227, engagement 799, and over 176,000 impressions. So again, creating an omni-channel marketing approach and adding those digital components is only going to increase your overall response rate and your overall uh, reach to that niche market. Now, game changer, okay? And I know that we're running over on time, but I'm, I just have a little bit more, so bear with me, okay? Lead match. Lead match is so essential right now in this market because you need to know who's looking at your products right now or who's looking at your services right now and market to them. So what Lead Match does is it identifies the anonymous visitors that are on your website right now and gives you their postal address so that you can mail to them. There is nobody more qualified to receive a direct mail piece from you than somebody who's on your website looking. And I will tell you that Google Analytics says 96% of unique website visitors will leave a website without taking any sort of an action. So a vast majority of people that are going to your client's website or to your website are leaving without converting. Wouldn't you love to know who those people are and then be able to retarget them via direct mail? Of course you do. This is another one that qualifies for digital to direct mail because it starts in the digital universe. Um, another thing is that once you do mail out and we have lead match on your site, we can prove who came to your website as a result of the direct mail, even if they didn't convert or put in their contact information. This helps you to prove the attribution that your direct mail is actually working. You might have 5,000 people come to your website, but how many of those people did you mail to? Oh, I mailed to 1,500 of those people and here's who they are. So proving attribution is huge. And just so you guys know about direct mail retargeting, the average response rates that we're seeing, again, right now on direct mail retargeting is between 9 and 18%, which is huge, huge, huge for direct mail response. These are micro-targeted campaigns, and they're very, very niche. So if somebody comes to your website and they're looking at a rug, and then they receive a postcard 72 hours later in the mail with that same rug on it with 20% off, don't you think they're going to be like, wow, this is really cool, and what a great offer. I'm going to go back and buy that rug. Of course they are. And that brings me to my next case study, which is that the retargeted direct mail delivered a 14% decrease in abandoned shopping carts and 8% increase in average order size. So utilize this, especially right now, because you don't know what you don't know in these unprecedented times. I know that that's so overused, but it's true. We don't have any previous data on this, so we need to be smart with our marketing dollars. 
And again, as I mentioned, Direct Mail 2.0 does qualify you for two of the postage promotions. Already, you don't have to do anything, so work with your uh, print provider. And we have partners all across the country, so if you need a print pr provider, Jamie is one of our, pr our partners um, and others. So here you can take a screenshot or whatever and find uh, some of our partners. Can you take a house list that only has an email and first last name and match it to a physical address? What other demographics can you get from just that email and name? Okay, so uh, you can do what's called a data append. Um, and there are data append services out there. Uh, one of them that we utilize is called A-type data, but there are several out there and you can ask your um, mail service provider about appending uh, services that yes, absolutely. From email addresses and first and last name, you can get physical postage, post office addresses and, and be able to send out mail to those people. Okay, the next question I believe is for the United States Post Office, Michelle. Um, what has been the impact of mail delivery uh, due to COVID? Are there delay differences in first class and standard mail, if you know? Um, overall, I think there, that what I've seen as far as reports is there's been very limited disruption, uh, particularly between the two classes of mail. Obviously, initially when this happened, you know, all businesses, including our own, had to kind of make a, a plan to deliver. But at this point, um, you know, the mail is moving, the mail's getting delivered, and it's really not being delayed. Um, occasionally, there may be an isolated area, but overall, the, it's been an amazing representation of the commitment of the people that work for this organization, keeping it moving. Uh, that was actually the end of the questions, unless anybody has anything further. Um, it was very comprehensive presentation. Uh, we we tried to go quickly so that we could uh, make sure we verbally explained everything to you guys, but we are more than happy to share uh, the slides with um, everybody. We'll send them to APC and you can contact them to uh, get a copy, uh, which also includes all the links and resources that Michelle shared. Um, Jamie is available to uh, speak to, Erica, of course, and um, I would ask everybody out there uh, to connect with uh, me on LinkedIn if you're not already. And um, again, my name is Deborah Korn, and I just want to thank Siobhan and the um, APC so much for, uh, first of all, for um, opening this up to everybody online. I really think it's one of the best moves that the club has done in a long time. And also for allowing us to be first in your experiment. And I hope that it pans out for everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much, Siobhan. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Erica. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you, Michelle. You know, and thank you guys. You know, it was a really nice support of the post office. We, you know, each and every one of you said so many wonderful things about a company that I've loved working for for so long. So it was, you know, kind of a, a wonderful experience for me to hire so many great things from outside in the industry. So thank you very much. You're welcome. We work with you every day, so. Absolutely. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> That's the aim of the game, right? <laughs> Absolutely you creating that type of conversation awesome well listen guys thank you again um as deborah said we will absolutely be sharing the um all the, the presentation and all the great um materials that um this awesome panel have shared with you today um we will make sure that goes around in the um post webinar email the video will be up on the youtube channel which we'll also link to on the email we'll also make sure that um all contact details are included in that and you can obviously um, follow the APC um, on LinkedIn where you'll be able to access everybody. Um, there was a ton of posts that had those links. And if anybody um, has any other questions, please also email um, the APC at info at apc-myc.com. So awesome. Thank you very much, guys. Um, this was without a doubt a great kickoff to the, uh, to the partnership program of the webinars. And um, Deborah, thank you again for bringing an amazing group of people together and for kind of leading that conversation. So um, have a gorgeous, wonderful evening, everybody, wherever you are. Um, and we'll talk to you all very soon. Take care. Thank Bye. Good night. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank Bye. you so much. Bye.